So out of curiosity, you know, when you go to conferences, what are the sort of things you're looking for to pick a conference to go to? Well, I think uh, uh, for me, uh, it is uh, not so much about attending for like education anymore, right? Uh, you know, frankly, uh, I prefer in this case to look through the slides, uh, uh, right? And uh, maybe watch recording, right? And if I have like uh, questions, right, I will just, you know, uh, contact the question, uh, contact the speaker, right? And, uh, he, you know, usually, uh, you know, talk to him if uh, uh, if I need to, right? But what, uh, uh, so in, uh, so for me, it is uh, uh, important to, to see the uh, relevant crowd, people which care about what uh, I uh, have uh, have to say, right? Because it's not fun when you come to a conference, right? And then you see there's like, a, you know, 10 people in the room, right? And they just, you know, on their phones because we just don't, you give a shit, right? What you're mm. uh, they're, they're using your room as your work, the work uh, room. yeah. So that, that is, uh, yeah, so that is something which is uh, which is important for me, right? But it's also, uh, I would say, uh, in many cases, the quality of attendees and especially speakers, right? I think that's a whole way track is uh, very important for me, and often, like, a biggest takeaway would be, uh this kind of unplanned side of conference saying, oh, I had a great conversation with those, uh, you know, couple of people and we are going to do some cool things uh, together. Okay, fair enough. So I guess um, when you were much more in the thick of, of running Percona, how mm -hmm. did you think about how much time you were spending going to conferences? Because, like, it's very, you know, very time-consuming, very... Um, you can really distract you from like the day-to-day -day of running the business how did you yes yeah well i think uh, in uh, well the good thing and bad thing right in the early days when i started to, in a started your corner right and that was in 2006 uh their conference in the space were not really so overwhelming mm. right because right now i think the folks uh, well the industry has grown and folks figure out the conferences are the good thing to kind of spread the world, right, to meet with your community and so on. So, so there yeah. is like often multiple conferences happening every uh, every week, uh, right? So, uh, so you can't hit them all, right? In that uh, old days, right? Well, really, there was not as many of them, right? Yeah. So you often uh, could hit all the relevant conference uh, in the in the ecosystem. Uh, for, much easier yeah because really back then it was like the oscon mysql conference i don't even know if there really was more than just a couple postgres meetups right from the database space yeah but at your corner at that time also did not uh, really focus on postgres right, right. so yeah so uh so yeah, yeah. So it was a much narrower so that was set. much uh, much yeah. more narrow yeah but now i mean with open source open source blowed up so every conference now seems to have some sort of open source track or something on it. we well, were looking at our our 2023 calendar for conferences this year and like we could be traveling like every other week if we really wanted to hit every single conference yeah. and just like completely yeah yeah that, that yeah that has become very uh very different right uh, and I think it's also interesting to me is what there is I think a, a lot more like conference fatigue for uh, m many many folks, right? Yeah. Especially if you think about uh, you know speaker thought leaders, right? It's kind of hey, you know what? I go to many of them, uh, right? It's kind of uh, well different, right? Compared to if you have like well everybody who is part of this uh, ecosystem, right? They all get together on that event once in a year, right? Then you have a different uh, level of energy out there. <laughs> Very true. Okay, I can't, here's actually a question that could be for both of you, because you've, you've both been doing conferences for, you know, a lot longer than me, giving lots of talks. Peter, you gave six talks at Boston. Seven. Seven? Seven, seven talks, right? Yeah, including three falls the my school. Yeah. Okay, them, yeah. seven talks. Yeah. Um, what would what's your advice to people who are kind of just getting into this maybe they've submitted a couple talks and they're all gotten rejected um which i think is very common there's a lot of people who will try to give talks in a given conference w me included yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's your advice for me to uh to uh, have a higher acceptance rate at talks at conferences yeah. well so uh, look right uh the first thing i would say right it was a uh, surprise for me that we proposed them or to they accepted so many uh so many of my talks uh, right and uh, and i even even say what well, that is unfair 
I think there have been some other good talks which uh, uh, were uh, the, were rejected, mm -hmm. uh, to, right? In this case, uh, right? But I think uh, a lot of my talks also were mostly at the different uh, different tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like uh, one per track or something. Yeah, so yeah. that is something which uh, also think like uh, why it was uh, this way, right? And also, I would say it's uh, not always this case, right? There are some conferences where I um, oh, don't get accepted, right? I think you should not uh, take your uh, rejections, uh, you know, personally. Uh, my advice would be in this case is to start uh, building your uh, building your portfolio, right? Maybe you can uh, speak at the local uh, uh, events, local meetups, maybe some uh, webinars, right? Because in uh, many cases, as you get that recognition, right? Or if you you know, supply like here, uh, listen for me uh, uh, to, to me speak, that can uh, that can help, right? I also think it's uh, and that is what I was saying about the speakers. Actually, uh, having their name recognitions mm -hmm. with the people who are on those committees and who decide that is very important. Right, so yeah. attend those events, right? Know who is on committee, right? And you know, just you know, open chat to them. Yeah, uh, very, very relationship based, right? Very, uh, yeah. very relationship based. Yeah, and you don't want to have bias completely to say like, oh, I'm only going to bring in the people that I know or my friends. You know, when you're on a CFP committee, but um, it does help if you know there's two sessions and you're like, I know this is a known quantity. I know they want to speak. You know, they're eager to be here, and this other person isn't. But I think there's there's also some other strategies now. Peter, I know you do this. I know I do this. Um, I know Bruce Mamja, Mamja. Bruce from the Postgres community. Yeah. Bruce from the Postgres community. I just knocked my mic off. Um, also does this where we, we submit lots of different talks to each of the conferences because we don't know exactly what they're looking for sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know, having more of a, a bit of a blanket approach now. Some organizers don't like that because there's just too many coming in. Mm. But if there's multiple tracks and you have things that fit into multiple tracks, that can really work well, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that's one option that you can do as well. Well, uh, and I think it is another interesting thing here, right? Uh, I would say it's good to understand if you look at the conference, right? And especially if you had something like sim, uh, vendor conference, right? Or even communities, they often have an angle. A focus, mm -hmm. right, of, yeah. a, of a conference as a whole of that year. Mm -hmm. If you can have something which supports that, that is a more likely uh, to be uh, accepted. In certain cases, right, if you know who runs a company, right, I think it's uh, also maybe good to ask, hey, you know what, uh, like, what uh, uh, would you want uh, to talk about, right? Maybe something, hey, what uh, you, uh, sometimes, you know, like, and we uh, like run Pircon Alive, right, for many years, right? Sometimes you can say, like, there's a lot of talks about this, but there is one topic you would like to be highlighted where there is not a lot of submissions, mm. right? So saying, hey, you know what, uh, uh, let me know, uh, right, and uh, uh, what the gaps are, right? And maybe say, hey, you know what, you let me know closer to the end of your CFP, right, because I'm looking to help you to uh, to cover the gaps, all right? And I think that especially, uh, especially help maybe like down the road, right, when you have some uh, reputation, <laughs> right, in this case where you have that kind of say, hey, you know, I can actually talk in a variety of uh, angles, right, because if you are, right. Uh, yeah. Well, and so another interesting thing is I think that it depends on the conference you're going to because a lot of um, conferences, you know, like FOSTEM, for instance, they're going to avoid anything that smells like a sales pitch, right? They don't want anything that's going to be promoting like, you know, a specific project or product or product specifically, where it's just more of that salesy type mentality. And then when you do have something that's very product specific, um, a lot of the bigger or, you know, companies or uh, uh, events typically want you to pay for that, right? They want you to sponsor and get like sponsored talks. Mm. And so it's hard to sometimes navigate if you've got something where you really want to talk about your product and it's something that you sell, that that typically is a more difficult position in my experience. Well, uh, that's right, right? And in uh, this regard, uh, even when it comes to your like open source pro project, right? Like, well, I would say like on a small, small scale, right? If you're speaking about, hey, you know what? We're going to a, you know, a Rust conference, right? And everybody's talking about Rust out there. Of course, you're going to talk about Rust, right? But if it's like a 
uh, smaller, um, smaller niche project, right? Even if it's uh, open source, in many cases, it's better to talk about the problem, right? And then use your uh, project as an example of a, of a problem uh, uh, a solution, which is much more acceptable, right? And one thing I often uh, talk to folks of Indian Twitter Corner Live in this case saying, look, you want to talk about your tool, like include it, great, right? But what I want is to make sure if somebody comes to your, to, to your talk and they're never ever going to use your talk, they still get the value from it, yeah. right? And in many cases you can say, well, talk about the problems, right? And wherever, right? And say, hey, you know, in our tool we solve X, Y, and Z. That's fantastic, right? But that also helps the people just to understand their problem set, right? And 